I was accepted at age 17 and given a full scholarship to the academy. While a student at the academy in the 60s, I was given a classic fine arts education. I was taught by the best working fine art teachers that were on the planet. Ben Kamahara, Jimmy Luters, Osborne, Walter Stumfig, Widener, Pittman, and that's just to name a few. Joyce Berger's radiant paintings at Rosemont College relate to a category of art known as color field painting. Color field artists can be abstract, like Mark Rothko, Morris Lewis, and Helen Frankenthaler. Others paint recognizable subjects, but often in a very simplified manner. Like Joyce, Elizabeth Osborne, one of her teachers at the Pennsylvania Academy, was inspired by the Bay Area figure painters and the British artist Howard Hodgkins. The kind of work that they do is rich with possibilities, especially if you remain open to all sorts of experiences. The Origin series. One of my big inspirations for this Origin series was my skateboarder grandson. He said, Grammy, come watch me do this. And I went out in the driveway and he built a ramp and he went down the driveway and flew off the ramp and I thought, oh! and instantly I saw the series take shape. He has no idea this happened. Now he does. <laughs> Is he here? Yeah, he's there. Good. I'm actually very surprised that she made those paintings like that because I didn't expect that. I mean, I know she always like sketched like some random stuff and she always watched me skating when she would like come over. I think they're cool. Do you recognize yourself in those paintings? I recognize the parts where you're in the air moving around and I think it's cool. So she really expresses what it feels like to be up skateboarding? Yeah, I think it's pretty good. It's well done. And for the next I don't know how many years, I watched every X game, I watched every athlete fly off of into the air, I watched snowboarders, skateboarders, you name it, if they were flying through the air. That's what inspired that series. You can't beat art openings at Rosemont's Lawrence Gallery. The food is great, the college staff are wonderful, and it's a warm environment for art lovers to mingle with the artist's family. Why do you call her Burger instead of Great Aunt Burger? Because I couldn't pronounce it when I was a baby, so I still got to call it. <laughs> we have a wonderful grandmother. I just have to applaud your passion and your commitment and the clarity of your vision and the result. Fantastic. Are you an artist? No. <laughs> You're all related? <laughs> I've been painting my entire life, exhibiting where invited, and my art hangs in some private and uh, corporate collections. What keeps me motivated? For starters, I love the process of discovery. When you're an artist, it is never ending. And I combine that with the creative process, and it's a double whammy. I graduated in the spring of 65 and was awarded the Scheidt Traveling Scholarship. I met my husband in school and we went off on a honeymoon on my scholarship. So, <laughs> so we went everywhere and had a blast. I am inspired by almost everything and I've learned to respect this and trust this instinct. I can see something that doesn't relate to anything in my life, but I'm attracted to it and I'll put it away. And 10 years later, I'm working on a painting and I'm a little stuck on it. And I look and there's the answer. And it starts me. You just have to go in her garage. It's really true. <laughs> she collects everything. Get my car in there. <laughs> Thank you.
and I go to the best teachers, the greatest painters in the world, because certainly they've had these problems long before I did. I feel that I was born an artist and I have a connection to artists from the cave painters to the present. They are also my ancestors. Now my family might be a little salted by this, but, but honestly, this is my larger world I'm talking about. I changed my color palette in 1989 from earth tones that I used at the academy in the 60s to exploring color worlds which were new ground for me. I started exploring with the color red. Well, that took me on a ride and it was exciting. Around 2010, I connected with an artist friend, E.O. Onwick, that I went to school with at the academy. We were both there at the same time. And it's very rare to find people that speak the artist language, that you can talk shop with, and who are supportive to one another. And I'm grateful for EO for helping me sharpen my focus and giving me such great support. EO Onwick. She's been studying with me for a few years, and it's a real joy to have her in the class because she's so good. I look forward to see what she's going to come up with because there's such powerful paintings and she's such a creative person and so intelligent and she knows about art. Prior to the origin series I was painting complicated compositions of all over pattern. I needed to simplify my paintings. That takes me to the Floating World series. I sold my home, packed up my studio and I moved twice before I could start painting again. And what came out was a series of, you can't deny it, it's landscape. Well, it was a mystery to me and it's a happy surprise. But I thought, I'm not going to judge it, I'm just going to go with it. I use colors I never used before. Quinactinone red, I mean, who knew? I never had to use that color. Veronese green, oh my gosh. Something exciting was flowing out onto the canvas and I just let it ride. The need to simplify the theme running through my everyday life became paramount in these paintings. I wanted well-structured composition. I stuck with the square format. I stepped back and I thought when I had a collection together and I thought, these look like they're floating. These are floating worlds. And that's where the name came from. The process, it's all oil paint. And it's brushes on canvas or linen. I had a thick brush with loaded with paint and I just went like this with it. And I thought, oh, I got all excited by the lines. Pat Nugent, the gallery's director, asked Joyce if she had any advice for the Rosemont art students in attendance. Don't be hard on yourself if you have periods of time where you can't paint for different valid reasons. Just be kind and get right back on that, on that track. Never give up. I mean, I'm 70, never give up. <laughs> Here I am. No, no.